We are starting with football on the Sportsmax Zone. The Jamaica Premier League, the top tier of football in reggae country, is less than two weeks from starting the 2023-24 season and a launch event commemorating the occasion was held by the CEO of professional football, Jamaica Limited, Owen Hill, otherwise known as Braddy, focused on the importance of bringing the product to the JPL as wide an audience to as wide as audience as possible and uh, showed how influential Sportsmax television was to facilitating a huge transfer last season. Several success metrics were checked on the scorecard and some of these include 10 successful player transfers that were completed throughout the entire year. Our most recent Trevante Stewart from Mount Pleasant again He's playing in the Italian Serie A. So his last game was the Jamaica Premier League final. And his next game was the Italian Serie A. That's massive. So the player that I mentioned earlier, Trevante Stewart. He was signed from the champions, Mount Pleasant. And not one time did a scout actually really come to Jamaica and look at this player. A lot of the clips, a lot of what was done was through the broadcast that we had. So again, it's massive. Having these games being broadcasted at venues that are suitable and the players get an opportunity, they will start earning bigger bucks. Yeah, Owen Hill, they're a CEO of uh, the Jamaica Professional Football Association. Now, the CEO of Sportsmax, Nicholas Matthews, shared the same sentiments. Sportsmax has been with football Premier League in Jamaica for eight years and accounting. We have been investing annually close to 60 million in the football production, broadcast, sponsorship and distribution for this league. And the key to this is we want to make this league be international. It's no longer a local league, it's an international league. And over the last eight years, over the last eight years, we have been distributing Jamaica Premier League across 26 countries across the Caribbean, in the United States, in countries right across the world. And the PFJ also has the opportunity to get broadcast rights on this product and uh, this is a big deal yeah last night a pretty vibesy function at the rear nephew offices rear nephew the new title sponsors of the jamaica premier league uh, mariah and uh, there were many players at the launch and they looked ready and rearing to go yeah and one of the things about the jamaica premier league you know i've been here for some time and it's one of the product on sportsmax that i really look forward to and i really enjoy it's also a pleasure to have rear nephew join as title sponsors because i was listening to the broadcast the live stream that we had and they were you know, very clear that it's not the first time Lance so that they've been associated with the JPL. So it's good to have them back because rare nephew white rum tastes so good. And the JPL product is such a good product. So I think it's a perfect blend. So that's a good thing. Two, I heard Nicholas Matthews, our CEO, speak about making the JPL not just for Jamaica, but international. And that's one of the things I'm very, very proud about our team here. Because, you know, we had the stats just now to back it up from Owen Hill. When you watch the JPL and the standard of coverage that is presented, it doesn't look like a local product. It looks international. And I'm happy that, you know, the athletes can benefit from this and get the opportunities like Trevante Stewart. And I'm hoping more people, Lance, can use the work that we do to, of course, you know, better themselves. Yeah. And the fact is, outside of uh, the fact that it is, you know, the, the premier pro league in, in CARICOM at the moment, um, it 
embraces so many players from outside of Jamaica as well because there are players in the Jamaica Premier League playing um, from St. Lucia. There are players from uh, Ghana, players from Suriname, and um, several of them champions as well. Um, uh, there is a St. Lucian, um, Moxley, who played with Cavalier when they won, and he was on the Mount Pleasant championship winning team as well. So yeah. he's already, in three years of playing JPL football, been a champion twice with two different teams. And uh, it is no doubt that there are a lot of players who are in the current league that were, were attracted to the league by watching the Jamaica Premier League on Sportsmax. A few of them have said so themselves that they stood in their countries in the Eastern Caribbean, watched a lot of the Jamaica Premier League, especially the Monday night games, and they just wanted to be involved. And some of them initiated contact with the local club officials and got themselves signed up. So, um, you know, I'm a, a Caribbean person, so yes. I, I really love the fact that so many Caribbean players have come to Jamaica to be a part of the Jamaica Premier League. And it's even more satisfying that uh, some of them have been champions as well. Yes, and I think it speaks to the quality of the product because nobody leaves their good, good country and their good, good home to go play football in another country if the quality is not top-notch and if they're not seeing the benefits. I'm looking forward though this season personally to see how Lime Hall and Treasure Beach fares in the JPL competition because they are the newly promoted team's lands and we won't have to wait too long because October 22, I wrote it down, it's next Sunday and I'll be looking forward to see how those teams um, keep up with the pace of the JPL because it's a fast-paced competition yeah. and I think, you know, we don't judge the teams difficult from the beginning of the season mm -hmm. but the moment it hits mid-season, it's time to pick up the pace. Yeah, and in recent years, a, a few of the teams promoted to the top flight have struggled to, to measure up. But there are clear indications that Treasure Beach and Lime Hall have, have enhanced their squads and, and are trying to make sure that they make a mark and would not, you know, find, you know, find it difficult to tackle some of the big teams. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how well they do. And I get the feeling that they're going to be fairly competitive. But we did see, you know, in, pre in, re in recent years where some of the teams that went up just found it difficult to cope. Yeah, do you have a team for this season or are we giving it some time? Uh, well, I like Mount Pleasant and I was happy that they won last time. And uh, at the moment, I see no reason to depart from Mount Pleasant. Uh, le let me, let me say, say quickly too that one of the points that the Master of Ceremonies meant, went, uh, made last night, um, Oral Tracy, was a good one because he spoke to the football as a as a as a domestic um, product, serving not just the purpose of um, being attractive to the fans who love football, but it has brought people together. You know, a few decades ago, the politically volatile uh, parts of Kingston would have been so um, would have been so uh, hyped up with with anger and so on between like Tivoli Gardens and Arnett Gardens that certain things would not happen and he made the point last night that Tivoli Gardens is now being coached by Jerome Waite who is from Arnett Gardens yes. and he's making the point that in the 70s and 80s that would never happen and he's right because of how politically angry and distanced those two um, communities are, you would never find some, something like that happening. And the fact that it has happened now, and it has happened so seamlessly, tells you that football has served a good purpose in Kingston and St. Andrew. Yeah, one of its many good purposes, because I love that. And I also had the opportunity to attend a lot of JPL matches. And Lance, what I think is it also brings communities families and friends together because attending one of the match i there's this um this soup chicken soup vendor that a lot of people go you know to partake it's it's like a family affair apart from the football taking place you know people use it to of course spend their free time and i think sometimes you know we overlook 
all these other benefits that comes with the sport. We only think that maybe only the players benefit because they get scholarships, but it's a good outlet for youngsters as well to see where they can be one day because think about a little child going with his mother just to support somebody and then one day seeing himself playing in a JPL match. So I think it has so many positives, so many advantages, and I look forward to personally attending more JPL matches this yeah. season. That's my goal. Yeah. Another good thing that we've seen in the Jamaica Premier League, and I think Cavalier would have to take a lot of credit for that, is the advent of more schoolboy players, more right. teenagers playing in the Jamaica Premier League, and Cavalier has best presented that as, as an approach. Um, you know, there were times they were playing last year where five or six of their starting players were, were teenagers, and that would never happen in previous years of Jamaica Premier League football. So Rudolph Speed and his uh, Cavalier club would take a lot of credit for leading the way in that, in that development because um, there, are, there are some other clubs that, that do it, but Cavalier would have to take the credit for being the pace setters as far as that is concerned. And uh, the fact that he has not only done that, but Cavalier has done that with success because they were champions a couple of seasons ago, uh, semi-finalists after that. So they've made the playoffs with that project of young players developing them. And I think Cavalier has to take a lot of credit for that as well because that's, that's a good sign for football in Jamaica. One of the things that we have said over the years is that because football in the Caribbean is so underdeveloped, we quite often miss the fact that 16, 17, 18-year-olds, if you're good enough and if you have the scope to get to the highest levels of football, at those ages, you should be playing high-quality football. You should be playing at the level that would show that you are ready for the higher level of football. And I think that's what we are seeing now, where a lot of 17, 18, 19-year-olds are flourishing in the Jamaica Premier League. And that's a good sign. And it's also an inspiration to some of the other younger players. I, I know a lot of them are still playing schoolboy football, so they won't play in the Premier League until January when the schoolboy football season ends. And because of the pro nature of the league, they have to still play as amateurs. But it is a good development sign that young players, really young players, 16, 17, 18 year olds, are in the Premier League and not only playing, but showing comfort at that level and scoring many goals as well. Yeah, and with that being said, the amount of years that you've been around the JPL and of course on commentary, would you say, Lance, that the quality of the Jamaica Premier League has improved? It's, that's a very difficult question. I've, I've heard that debate over and over. And because I remember the kind of high quality players that I would have seen in the 80s and 90s, it's hard for me to immediately say that the quality is better now than then. Yes. What I would say, though, is that the professionalism and the coaching strategies um, being used in the current league would be superior to what had existed back in the 80s and 90s. And I guess you could say that translates to improvement. But I, I am very careful in making those statements because I, I can tell you there were some players in the 80s and 90s, you could go back to the 70s, if they had the opportunities that some of these players now yes. have, and the field conditions as well, because the, the most, in most instances, the fields are a lot better now than they were you know, 20, 30 years ago. And I, I, I can think of some players who I saw in the 80s and 90s, if they had the opportunities and the facilities and uh, the the improved field conditions that these players had, I think many of them would be far advanced from where some of these players are now. Yeah, it's so unfortunate that we were not around then to see with <laughs> video footage and for these uh, players to benefit, of course, from that coverage. Because as you said, for all you know, they would have been suiting up for the big, big clubs like the Manchester City and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for sure. We go to break. We still have a lot more football to come and cricket and much more on the Sportsmax Zone on this Wednesday. Back in a moment.